your group is is talking about this as the most um, the most difficult in history, and when consider difficult challenge, yes, difficult to, challenge in history. I mean, we've we've you know gone through countless pogroms, the Holocaust, um, you know, all sorts of failed messiahs and so forth. Sure. Why is it the most difficult in history? The most difficult challenge in history. Well, first of all, we regard it as certainly the most difficult spiritual challenge, um, simply because, well, for, for a number of reasons, but um, one of the reasons is because uh, this is a challenge which has been able to make an end run around the traditional bulwarks and defenses that we have. This is, uh, you know, th th this, is, this is a, uh, <coughs> so to speak, I mean, it's, if you want to use, you know, martial terms, an enemy, you know, if we're talking about the onslaught of technology is something which, um, you know, does a, a, a pole vault over, you know, over, over the walls and, and the defenses and, and the insulations that we create uh, and comes right into our homes, into our offices um, and into our hearts. So this is something which, you know, is we, we, we have to have a paradigm shift and we have to, uh, you know, develop uh, ways to deal with this, um, whether it means through counteracting technology itself by placing safeguards and and uh, and and withdrawing from it uh, in in various ways, or whether it means uh, strengthening and buttressing our own spiritual uh, you know immune systems in terms of you know in terms of increasing the our our dedication to uh, to Judaism, uh, the joy that we experience in it, and uh, and, and so on. So there, there's really a, a bifurcated, you know, process that we need to engage in, um, which one is you know more offensive, one is one is defensive. Um, we realize that one without the other simply will not will not work. It seems it's quite clear that there's something about the internet mm -hmm. which is more powerful than the technological the technological advances we've seen before it's interactive and it's private right mm -hmm. um, you know and it's it's becoming increasingly private you know before you used to have a big computer now you can just sit in sure. your in your car and do this um, who specifically came up with the idea of the asifa was it it seemed to it seemed by my reporting it seemed to have come uh, I mean, there are a lot of people obviously concerned about it, but it seems like Lakewood kind of took the lead on it. Uh, not, not really. Um, I would say it was it was one particular individual, you know, who who plays a very central role in the Lakewood Yeshiva, which is of course the kind of the, the focal point of the larger and burgeoning Lakewood, you know, Orthodox community, and that was Rabbi Montesio Solomon, whom we've talked about. He's the spiritual dean, and he boots the Mashkiach. He's a spiritual dean of the Lakewood Yeshiva, which is the largest uh, yeshiva in the United States and nearly the largest in the world. It's probably second largest in the world. There's one in Israel, which is probably larger in, in numerical terms. Um, but again, it's it's a, it's a yeshiva which, you know, by American university standards, is uh, you know a minor league, uh, you know, a uh, Division three or whatever you call it in NCAA terms, you know. But uh, in, in by yeshiva standards, to have you know, several thousand single fellows who are studying at what you, what you would call, you know, postgraduate level, uh, and then to have even even more, uh, several thousand more, um, what you call kind of postdoctoral fellows studying in the COLA, which is the division for married uh, scholars. Um, so you've you've got a total student population of probably something in the neighborhood of uh, I don't know six thousand, um, you know, which uh, again is is by far the largest, and therefore it's the most influential such academy. Uh, and, and again, there's a, a large, it's one of the most vibrant Orthodox communities in the United States today is that which has grown up around Lakewood and it's spreading out, uh, you know, far in, within Ocean County and suburban New Jersey. Um, and again, Rabbi Solomon is actually a, a British-born um, scholar uh, who uh, served in positions in, in England before coming to, uh, to Lakewood, uh, I would say probably about two decades ago. And he has uh, a tremendous. He's he's a uh, he's, he's a brilliant and and uh, and and uh, very compassionate and very eloquent um, thinker and, and and spokesperson on on uh, religious issues for the American Orthodox community, and he was really the the prime mover and catalyst behind all this. It's not to say that the concerns uh, that, that that he's expressing you know that he's expressing are they're shared across the spectrum. There's no question about it. 
Um, and, and by the way, on that note, I, I you know, have a lot more to say really on the first question about talking about why this is an unprecedented challenge. I really, I focused in on one particular point. I don't want it to be understood that that was the only, that's the only thing that, that is so different about, about the internet was this idea that, that it, you know, it seems to make some of our, some of the, our previous strategies for maintaining our spiritual and, and human integrity so uh, you know, penetrable at this point, there are, there are a lot of other things. I just wanted to you know, make that note. I mean, if, you want to, if you want me to interject that now sure, or at yeah, a later yeah. point, yeah. I mean, just, you know, I mean, uh, again, I mean, you know, the, and, and many of the, many of the, the aspects of, of technological advances, which we, 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 we tend to, you know, put under the, just the catch-all rubric of, of internet. Again, these are things, as we, you and I have, have talked about before, these are things which cut across societal lines. And they are not uniquely Orthodox Jewish and not even uniquely Jewish concerns. These are concerns that human beings across the societal spectrum um, have or need to have. Um, uh, and, and again, we're, we're talking about, and, and, and that's why the internet is so different than anything we faced before, even in spiritual terms, because never before was there a was there a, a spiritual challenge. Uh, you know, for example, in other words, there, uh, let's say in the um, you know in the in the, in the 18th century, uh, you know, so there was the Enlightenment and the and the the crumbling of the ghetto walls, which opened you know Jewry to you know to to everything that the broader world had to offer in terms of you know academics and in terms of uh, you know the arts and, and uh, the arts and sciences and so on. And obviously that, that, that posed a, a tremendous intellectual challenge and, uh, and, and it, it, it um, engendered pushback and response on the part of the traditional community, uh, which is not something you know, we can go into now, but, but suffice it to say that that was, it, it gave the, uh, the traditional community, maybe at that point it wasn't yet known as orthodox because orthodox is a term which which, which came into vogue, you know, as a contrast to the, to the heterodox movements, to, uh, to reform and later conservatism. But uh, what I would call the traditional Jewish community, which, which you know, was, uh, which basically was a, a forerunner of, of today's orthodox community. So it gave the traditional community a great run for its money. But it was an intellectual challenge. In a sense, the the uh, the internet is not that it's not a, it's not an intellectual challenge per se because it doesn't it's 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 only a medium it's 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 a vehicle for conveying things, but it poses challenges to the most essential elements of our humanity in the sense of it poses challenges to our pr sense of privacy. Uh, it poses challenges to the the extent that um, you know we can maintain the integrity of our relationships, whether it's a relationship of a husband and wife, whether it's a relationship of a parent and child, um, you know, it, 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 it makes us, it, it, it opens us up and makes us vulnerable to the, call it the enticements, call it the, you know, of, of, of other people who, uh, who, who don't uh, have our best interests, uh, you know, at heart. And, and again, you know. But what's the difference between um, what you can see on the internet and anyone, you know, even beforehand, walking down the street, seeing billboards, seeing uh, women. Well, in well, I haven't even gotten to pornography. I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking now just in terms of when we talk about, you know, th that what we're seeing in our community. And again, it's not a it's not a uh, uniquely un un uh, orthodox phenomenon by any means. This is something which, you know, the psych the psycho the psychological literature, the therapeutic literature uh, in, in today is is reflecting this that it's leaving a, a trail of casualties in terms of, you know, uh, uh, shattered relationships. So whether it's, you know, ma marital relationships and, and, uh, um, and, and, and the way that kids are being, uh, you know, the cyberbullying that takes place, the, um, the, the, you know, the, uh, you know, internet predators, you know, that, that, that exist, or even if it's not that, but just the way that it exposes children to what 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 any fair-minded individual uh, would have to agree are are the some of the most degraded you know uh, expressions of, of 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 humanity that 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 have ever been invented and all of that is available at the at the click of a mouse and you know like you say anywhere and everywhere um, it, it, it's impossible to get away with it with the pervasiveness of, of wireless and so on and so forth so. These are things that you know. What what a couple of decades ago, or even a decade ago, would have would have taken great effort, you know, for someone to fall into 
you know, uh, a, a relationship that, that does violence to, to a person's, you know, marriage, uh, now it's, it's, it's with the ease of a chat room, of, of a Facebook encounter, and so on and so forth. So this is, again, one aspect. And then there are the, then there, there, there is the challenge that it poses to, um, you know, to what is for us an extremely important part of our uh, spiritual lives, which is the ability to, to study, to study Torah texts, the ability just to have time to contemplate um, our religious obligations and what it is we want to be doing with our lives. You know, I introspection is a, is, a, is a very, very important part of our, of our religious lives. Um, you know, we, 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 are, we are people who have a, a, a belief system that has been around for millennia, which, in which we believe that our lives are purposeful. Uh, the world, there's a creator to the world who created human beings were not just a, a haphazard collection of amoeba and uh, organisms floating through the universe with, with, no, uh, with, with no reason. Um, we're here for a purpose. We were given uh, an instruction manual to, 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 to live the most successful lives we possibly can and really to actually fix the world and, and make it the wonderful place that it's supposed to be and that it, and, and that it, that it can be if only human beings would get their act together. Um, you know, again, all, all of these you know, the ideas of, of, of uh, human brotherhood, of, you know, human brotherhood, and of human rights, and of uh, you know, peace for all mankind, all, all these sorts of things. These are these are th these are uh, characteristically Jewish ideas. These are the ideas that the Torah, that the, 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 the uh, that, that Judaism introduced into the world, into into a pagan, bloody world, millennia ago. And again, so because we believe in, in living purposeful lives. And we're given a, an instruction manual as to how to how to do that if we should so choose to do, which is no simple task, and it's we spend our entire lives trying to better ourselves in small ways. Um, that that requires a, a lot of thought. That requires getting the static out of our lives. Um, that that requires not not having to be on call twenty four seven three sixty five. Um, so, so, and that's, that's true across the board. Now, that's true even for people who are engaged, engaged in full-time, let's say, Talmud study. Then you talk about the folks in Lakewood or in the various other, you know, uh, academies around the country, around the world, or even just the working folk who, who, who spend, you know, a, 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 an Orthodox Jew in good standing, uh, certainly among the men, because men have more obligations study-wise than, than, than women do. They have other roles. It's a whole separate discussion about the way we believe that we have different, uh, although equal, roles in, in spiritual perfection, and certain the genders do, that is. But in any event, a, your, you know, your basic um, you know, Orthodox uh, man in good standing spends at least an hour, sometimes two to three hours a day, and we're talking about professionals. We're talking about doctors and lawyers or cab drivers and carpenters in Talmud study. And Talmud study is, you know, I, I call it, um, you know, it's, it's basically nuclear physics, except that it's all in Hebrew and in Aramaic. <laughs> so you have no, no idea what the heck you're talking about. Right. And, you know, it's, it's funny that we're sitting here speaking on, on a Wednesday, which is precisely, we're just over seven days this evening at, at 7.30 will be precisely seven days until an, 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 a gathering that will be double the size of this evening. You may have heard the Seema Shaz. Yes. Now, what is that celebrating? That's celebrating the fact that thousands of Orthodox men will have spent the last seven and a half years learning a page a day of this, nu of this nuclear physics textbook in Hebrew and in Aramaic. Um, and uh, that, that, that takes tremendous powers of concentration. The internet comes along, and not just the internet, but all of its permutations. The idea that the, the idea that we have this technological ball and chain attached to us, called smartphones, and called you know, and, and, and everything is 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 whirring and, and beeping and going off and constantly. And you, and you see this in the synagogue, and you see this in the study hall, and you see that people cannot cannot give this the, the, the time and the focus that that it deserves. Um, and and for us, that's you know, that may may sound um, you know. Uh, trivial to other people, but it's not to us. And if you if you know our lifestyle from the inside, you know that that's Torah, Torah study. And again, this is not just it's a study of law and it's a study of ethics. It's what makes us not just better Orthodox Jews, but it makes us better as human beings. We're studying about our obligations vis-a-vis -vis our fellow man, about how we have to take care not to damage his property and what happens if we do damage his property. You know, we're studying here. This is 
you know, every, every Orthodox Jew is, is basically an amateur attorney, you know, has, has the, the equivalent of, of, of basic, you know, legal education. And it's intertwined. The law and the ethics are intertwined. So we're l learning about the laws of how you're not allowed to utter even a word of slander against another, another individual. And it's not, it's, not, it's not just that sentence. There's a whole body of law devoted to laws of slander because obviously there are cases in which you have to be able to say things and so on. So it's a, it's a whole very, very developed body of law and comes along the internet and its associated technologies and it blows all this you know, apart. So I'm just, you know, that's another, another, another area, uh, you know, in, in, which, in which this is a challenge, you know, like that, that we've never seen before. Um, at one point, there was a movement to just ban the Internet outright. Mm -hmm. that, that has happened successfully at, at Lakewood Yeshiva, but that's in a contained environment. Sure. Um, what, did, what is this, what is the goal of this Asifa, um, realizing that that was unrealistic to ban it? Yeah, well... Actually, you know, to speak of the Asifa itself is, is really, is, is just a small part of the story because, and it has, has been noted in, in some of the commentary, even, you know, within the Orthodox world and in, in, the, in my own magazine, which, you know, of which I'm the U.S. editor in whose offices we're sitting now, which is uh, Mishpacha, which if I can give it the plug, you know, it's the, it's the leading uh, Orthodox, uh, uh, Orthodox Jewish magazine, mm -hmm. not only in the United States, but really worldwide, uh, you know. Uh, we have a readership that really numbers in, in the hundreds of thousands, and um, uh, so you know, even within the pages of our own magazine, there was a lot of discussion about how the Asifa, although it may have been a very inspiring event, and and it was amazing that they were able to pull it off and it, with with such a little lead time and so on, and it, it was it was wonderful as a catalyst. Uh, there's no question that that some of the speeches that, that the the message was somewhat diffuse, and that, that there wasn't one. Uh, central message that went out and, and some, some of the speakers may have even been at, at odds with each other to some extent that the messaging was not uh, was not as, as, as great as it could have been but what's more important is what has happened post the Asifa the very next morning a lot of people would, a lot of people don't know if they're reading you know, the secular media or even the secular Jewish media is that about 150 rabbis of communities from across the United States Orthodox rabbis uh, spent the spent the night at at a hotel at, at LaGuardia, and the next uh, morning had a had a, a full day conference, which was chaired again by Rabbi Solomon and by a Rabbi Feldman, who's the dean of of the largest uh, yeshiva in, in Baltimore, a leading scholar as well, and basically that became a real brass tacks discussion about now what's the next step and how do we actually take the inspiration of the of the evening before. And, and really concretize it and, um, and, and make sure that it's a community by community process. And? Because again, we realize that, you know, although we may look that way to the outside world, certainly, you know, the Hasidim because of their garb, and you'll see a lot of those folks around in this neighborhood, obviously the heavily Hasidic neighborhood, you know, if, you, if you just judge them by their garb and they look like a monolith and they just, you know, just a, a robotic mass, a, you know, an undifferentiated yeah, blob. No illusions of that. Okay, happening. okay, fine. So, you know, uh, heaven knows how different the reality is. I mean, how orthodoxy is this bubbling cauldron of, you know, I mean, the old cliche about two Jews, three opinions. Well, you know, when it comes to Orthodox Jews, you know, it's probably, you know, three Jews, seven opinions, because, you know, it's, it's just, because one guy has an opinion, but he says, yeah, but it depends when, and so on and so forth. So it kind of splits into, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's like a stock split. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what I'm saying is, is that we're not a monolith by any means, and uh, you've got a whole spectrum within Orthodoxy, as you're probably aware, going from the Hasidic groups with, again, the Hasidic groups themselves, I, I like to talk about them, you know, whimsically as the team, you know, I say, what team are you on? You know, you're with the Braves, you're with the, you know, because again, and, and even their garb, the truth is, if, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you're an insider, you know that you can tell, depends if he's got the socks, if he's got his pants in his socks or not, or, or what kind of fur hat he's wearing on that sweltering or if summer the day. Or was on the right or the left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, even within the Hasidic world, there's this great, there's, there's this great differentiation. There's, there's this great uh, diversity. And then you go from the Hasidic world into what you call the yeshiva world, or which, let's say, would be, you know, represented by the Lakewood community and its affiliates. Uh, and then you've got kind of like the yeshiva light or what you would call kind of like, it's not quite centrist orthodox, I'll get to that in a minute, but you've got, and I kind of fit into, let's say, that yeshiva crowd that 
we're not full-time scholars, but we certainly, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, follow that philosophy to a large extent. And, um, and, and, and it goes down with gradations, you know, sometimes subtle gradations. So you've got people that are somewhat to the left religiously of, let's say, the Lakewood Yeshiva, you know, grouping. Uh, and then beyond that, you've got, let's say, the Orthodox Union, which is centrist orthodoxy, which is kind of not yet modern orthodoxy. And then you've got this whole world of modern orthodoxy, you know, Yeshiva University and, and so on. And uh, so there's this tremendous diversity within orthodoxy. Uh, and then you've got the diversity, the difference between, you know, the, the in-town sort of the Brooklyn orthodoxy and, and, and out-of-town communities, um, you know, which, which by nature are, are more integrated with the outside world. Let me so, just, yeah, is sure. the, is, should the takeaway be what, what's on page three of this, which is there is no excuse for using the internet where it's not absolutely necessary? I'm trying to represent you accurately. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put it this way. Um, we, we certainly believe that, there, the, for example, certain aspects of the internet, such as social networking sites, such as, you know, you talk about Facebook and, 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 uh, and, and Twitter and those things. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to make a case that they're of any necessity, let's say business-wise. Um, can, they, can they be put to good use, to even, even to good religious use uh, under certain circumstances? Absolutely. You know, the, the phrase that became sort of a mantra for me when I was representing, you know, the sponsors of the ASIFA was cost-benefit analysis, which is something that all of us apply, you know, all of us who strive to be successful human beings. We apply this in all aspects of our lives. But it seems like you, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but it yeah. seems, it seems, and there's nothing wrong with this, it seems like you're still trying to figure out. I mean, it, it seems that the, you know, at one time the, the reaction was to ban the internet entirely. Mm -hmm. right. Here in the book, it's only use it if you absolutely have to. Now you're saying, well, maybe there are like good parts of it. Maybe you can, st maybe you could, um, you know, get a, a commentary on, uh, you know, well, on, the, on the Talmud from the internet. So again, um, what I would really say is social networking sites, we find that they, if you do an honest cost benefit analysis, the risk far outweighs the benefits. Uh, and I, was, I, was, I was identifying the fact that you can find the benefit to anything. I mean, for that matter, you can find the benefit to, you know, I mean, you know, firearms have benefits. <laughs> I mean, there are people that enjoy hunting, whatever, or, you know. So any, anything that's some kind of benefit, you just can't go ahead and, and say, oh, I, I find this redeeming feature, I'm running with it. No. And therefore, we would say that although there may be positive aspects to, let's say, social networking sites, that's something that I think we're pretty much all agreed uh, and when I say we, meaning those who are, you know, the sponsor of the ASIFA and, 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 the, and the, you know, concerned individuals who are, who are dealing with this post asifa we say that that's something which we, we lose far more than we gain. Okay. Um, you know, again, for, whereas on the other end of the spectrum, when you talk about using it for business purposes, there's, there's, really, not, there's really no one, you know, f for the most part, I can't say there's no one at all, but... I would say that the, the bulk of, 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 of opinion within the community is, is that something that obviously is, is going to go forward in today's world. It's a reality. It's yeah, here to stay. Right. I mean, what about like, uh, what about Asia Torah? Can you go to Asia Torah? Well, so, okay. So again, you know, that's the, the, then you've got the Jewish oriented sites, which, you know, to a large extent, that's something that you can, can be dealt with with a whitelist. You know, whitelist is something where you, a, whitelist? a whitelist is something where you, you have a, 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 a company which an internet filtering co company, okay. which gives you only the sites that you request. Um, and and certain, certain sites, they just won't give you at all. In other words, they just simply won't give you eBay because eBay is something that's just far too open and it, it, the risk, the, the spiritual risk, the moral risk is, is too great. But they'll give you, so in other words, you can have a, a whitelist with 200 Jewish oriented sites. You can have Asia Torah and, and, you know, and Chabad.org and everything else. And One of the benefits that people that internet uh, proponents would say is that one of the benefits of the internet is that you just sort of troll around and find things that you, you know, hadn't thought of before. Right, and we say that one of the greatest detriments is precisely that. Not only in terms of the waste of time, and again, for us, time is not a trivial thing. We say that, you know, wasting time is suicide in installments. We're, we have, we, 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 life is just too precious for us because we have so much to fill it with. You know, and again, there's not a value judgment about anybody outside of our community or in the secular world, but to, to a large extent, when, when, you've got a, when you've got as fully formed a religious system as we do, when you've got so much Torah to be studied, 
so many, so many works of ethics and so many good deeds that can be done, so many organizations you can volunteer for. And, and again, I must tell you, within the Orthodox community, there's just the amount of volunteering that takes place, you know, whether it's visiting the sick in the hospitals, whether it's, you know, you know free loan funds and, you know, uh, students, uh, high school girls, you know, volunteering to help a, a woman with her children after school, uh, helping out with the with with the with the disabled, with the mentally disabled, the physically disabled at at, at camps and at programs throughout the year. There's a, there's a whole network of, of of what's happening. So we have so much to fill our lives with. And when you put, you know, tr you know, uh, surfing the internet next to that, and I and I know of what I speak. I mean, this is something I'm, I'm intimately familiar with with everything we're talking about here. There's not something that I'm talking about because I read it in, in talking points. It's, it's so vapid, so empty, so nothing. There's like nothing there. I mean, it's just, and, it, I, and, and I understand sometimes we need to decompress and, and that's fine. You know, I, I don't want to paint the picture of the other community as we're these hyper-focused, constantly looking for meaning. No, no, no. I mean, you, you know, you go, you go to the parks, you go to, you, you know, if, if you've ever, there's a phenomenon here, one week in the fall and one week in the spring all of a sudden, all over New York City, you see these Orthodox families with, you know, like five, six, seven, as we know, very large families in tow, and even the most Hasidic ones, and they're all over the parks and the zoos and the museums and everything. Why is that? That's because that's holiday break. So Orthodox Jews are fine with having a great time. Obviously, we have, to, to some extent, and depending on where you situate yourself in Orthodoxy, we have a different idea of what a good time means. We don't do movies. We don't have TVs in our homes, and people just, their tongues, that draws drop when you say, I, I don't have a TV. But that's okay, we have a great time anyway. You know what I mean? That we can get, depending on where, you, where you're situated, bowling is fine and, and basketball is fine, well, athletics are fine and so on and so forth. And, you know, and, and, and in games and board games and so on, uh, we have a great time. But the point is, in other words, but, that's, but we still realize that for the most part, we're, we're, we're serious people and we take life seriously and we don't believe in wasting time. So that's that. And then there's the other point about about surfing the internet, which is sure, you can find all kinds of fascinating, quirky stuff. And you can also find, at, where at the click of a, of a button, you can introduce a kid to images he's never seen before, which can destroy him psychologically, uh, destroy his ability because it becomes addictive and because you're drawn into this web. And it's not just a kid, it's for adults every bit as much. We don't fool ourselves. Uh, you can be drawn into this and it can destroy your, how you view women. Um, and, and again, as I, as I said, I, and I, I wrote this actually in a, in a piece uh, for our magazine, my weekly column, and I talked about my experiences with the media, uh, you know, before, during, and after the, oh, the SC yeah. I'd love to give that to you, Josh. And I, one of the things I talked about was that there were a lot of things that I said that were quoted by the media, but there was one thing, there was one question that I kept asking over and over and that nobody seemed to, you know, uh, feel it was uh, worthwhile quoting, which was, I said, why is it only 40,000 Jews that are packing City Field to, 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 to address the challenge of the internet? Why aren't 40,000 feminists packing City Field? Or 40,000 humanists or 500,000 humanists packing the Great Lawn at the Central Park? We can all get together for a Dave Matthews concert. That's great. But what about us all getting together to address the challenges that the internet poses to us as human beings and it poses to, to, to the devaluation of women in today's society? What, I mean, what, what hath internet wrought to our hearts and our minds in terms of what pornography does to our, to our, to our understanding of, 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 of a woman as a, as a valuable human being. I mean, that's, that's, you know, and that's something that can be asked about advertising and about a lot of aspects. One point I would make is that to some extent they're right in the sense that we actually believe that rabbis have good things to say. We actually believe in moral leadership. Um, no, we, we don't believe in just a, uh, a, uh, a, a wide open uh, marketplace of ideas where, because again, we're, we're, not, we're not a belief system, we're not a faith community that says the truth is relative, that is your truth and my truth, and hey, that works for you, and so on and so forth. No, no, we believe there are truths. There are truths that God has revealed to us and that he has entrusted to, to, a, to a, 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 a huge um, oral tradition that, that encompasses millions of scholars, millions of the most brilliant and most ethical, most compassionate scholars throughout the generations. I mean, again, this is not, I'm not gonna give you a you know, whirlwind tour of Jewish theology here, but, the, but in short, in brief, the point is that yes, we actually do believe in humbling ourselves and listening to what our leaders, who, 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 know, who we know to be 
the, of, of sterling character and of brilliant mind and who, and, and who are suffused with love of the Jewish people as a whole and of each individual Jew. Um, and we know them to be that because, again, they don't, they don't live in gated compounds with, with handlers and with Howard Rubenstein handling their PR, as you have in the secular world. We, we live right next door to them. We know these people. We live with them. We eat with them. We, you know, we, we study with them and we study under them. And they know us. Again, they're not because they're not living in ivory towers. And if people portray it that way, then they're simply either outsiders to our system or they're insiders who seek to skew things. So we know them, they know us, and yes, we actually we 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 look forward to the uh, to the opportunity to be able to re to receive their teaching and to be able to receive their guidance. So yes, to the extent that it weakens the the uh, their 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 voice of of reason and their voice of morality that we consider that a tragedy that's number one but again to the extent that there's something more subversive something very very sinister going on and there's some kind of plot on the part of you know it's it's again the 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 protocols of the elders of Zion the orthodox version and that there's something going on where they got together and we decided we must stamp out the internet. I just ask, where's the evidence? Uh, do, do we have documents? Where's the smoking gun? In other words, to, to some extent, to, in, in the sense that these people kind of go over the top and say, oh, well, it's, it's because of those abuse allegations. And, and they know that, that if, if, we don't, if we don't stamp out the internet, then everyone's going to know that there's you know, sexual abuse in the Orthodox community. Uh, okay, where's your evidence that any such, where's your evidence that, in other words, that what I'm saying is it's conjecture, it's pure speculation. And there's no reason for the conjecture because, again, if, if, you, if your eyes are open and you read and you're living a life in today's society, you know that the internet is not just a problem for Orthodox Jews. It's a problem, as I keep you know, reiterating, it's a problem for all of us. Uh, and this is what educators are telling us. This is what therapists are telling us. This is what, you know, this is what uh, social commentators are telling us. So there's no reason to come up with all sorts of dark you know, dark, um, uh, you know, uh, so I'm looking for, I'm looking for uh, Oliver Stone's, uh, you know, modus operandi, uh, you know, oh, looking for uh, conspiracy. Conspira right, exactly. No, 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 no need to come up with dark conspiracy theories about that this is a power grab on the part of the rabbis. No, it's about what we say it's about. It's about the loss of our humanity. It's about the loss of our privacy. It's about, it's about what, 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 what the internet does to us when we get on there anonymously and we go on to comment sections, we go on to blogs, and we turn into raving lunatics and we turn into, into moral ogres. That's what it's about. I mean, what, what, why the need to come up with all kinds of all, all, all other crazy, you know, uh, you know, flights of fancy? I mean, it's just, well, I, mean, it's just I, I don't know what, I don't know where it's coming from. If you want it, you know, if you want to engage on, on, on some of these issues as, as, they, as they absolutely do on the, on, the, on the abuse issues or, or other issues that are going on of dysfunction that exists within the Oregon community, and I'm, I'm not going to deny that any of that is happening. And, and we're addressing that, and my magazine addresses that on a weekly basis. So uh, that's another point, by the way, which is the notion that somehow, you know, we're not looking to address these issues, and that's why we're trying to shut down the internet. Well, no one's trying to shut down Mishpacha magazine. It's Are you far and away. I'm sorry. Is Mishpacha magazine online? Uh, we have a website. It's not very. It's it's not uh, all that well developed, but we do have. Yeah. But why should someone be able to just go to Mishpacha and? I mean, are you concerned? This again, is another, again, it's this another story whether you yeah. feel like your that your your business model might be undermined by the internet. I mean, um, no. To the contrary, we're looking. We're actually looking to. We were looking to develop it more. We just haven't gotten our act together. But we're looking to use the internet to as a way of, you know, of of, of uh, moving traffic towards towards our our print version. But don't you getting back to the other point? Don't you give your critics ammunition when there are, um, you know, bans on websites again. What, what, bans on particular websites? Yeah, or? ban on Buzz is nice. Fine. I, I don't know what that's about. That's pro what, what that's probably about is, but again, that's not a ban on the internet. It's a ban on a particular website, which that's probably because it's probably full of uh, of, of undocumented slander, well, on of the contrary, hearsay, it's just and whatever it is. A news out. Uh, it's well, actually, first of all, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get sued by them. So I don't know if I want to put this on, on, on uh, you know, on, uh, on tape, but. It's, People like them and, and other such sites, I'm not singling them out, I think they're news aggregators and I think what they're doing is probably illegal, actually. Right. That's number one. So they, they probably should be shut down by the federal, mm -hmm. by, 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 some, uh, by some governmental authority. 
But again, I, I, I haven't read this, and I don't know, and I don't necessarily agree with this proclamation, so I'm not going to defend something right. I haven't read. I mean, the, but the, the point is, that that's about the particular content of Vos Nias. That's not about anything else. And, and I probably agree with them. You go on to, uh, again, you go on, what, what, what are sites like this? And that's not even a blog. Well, let's say another one. It's a news site, right? Aggregates stories. Stories that are not, haven't been documented. Stories that have not been... Uh, uh, whose, to, whose truth and veracity ha have not been uh, attested to. And then you've got a long string of, of comments by people who are hiding behind all these courageous commenters who won't use their, their real names. You know, if it was up to me, I would, I would make a rule on, on, on blogs and on the internet. Use your, and you, use your real name. If you don't have the courage of your convictions, please don't, don't, don't comment. Because all this, all, this, all this does is it turns us into these, these brave folks who can lash out at other people, who can throw about accusations that are libelous, that, are, that, that can actually destroy people's careers, marriages, et cetera. And so, what, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't think there's anything so great about, you know, about, a, about a website like that. Well, the critics will maintain, and maybe they have ammunition to do so, that there's a rabbinic control that's trying to suppress that in the community which needs to be addressed. I mean, it doesn't seem, at least to these people, they don't right. feel that there are terrific outlets that pre-existed, that predated the internet, that would allow them to raise these kind of concerns that they have. And when a website about news is shut down, and when other people can't go on the internet to right. look at news and to look at critique, right. they might feel that they are being, that, there's, that there is some sort of conspiracy, that there is some sort of top-down hierarchy that wants to shut down any kind of challenge. So again, all I would say is, number one, there's no evidence of any such conspiracy. This wouldn't even work as a grade B movie in Hollywood. That's number one. Because it just, it doesn't work as a plot. That there is a plot doesn't work as a plot. That's number one. So it's, it's wild conjecture on their part that there is any such remaining conspiracy. I can tell you this from the inside. <laughs> there has not been any such move that's not what the Asifa was about, not only in the, in the, in the public relations material, not only in, in, the, in, in, in what I was given to, in, my, in my messaging. It's simply not true just based on the, on the meetings, on the, on, the, on the organizing meetings of this Asifa or of the, 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 the wider effort to, to deal with the Internet. The reasons for us to, to deal with it there are, are so many that we, that we don't need this Explanation. It's 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 one thing if it would be this puzzling phenomenon. What could they possibly see that, that could be wrong with the internet? There are so many, so very many things that are wrong with the internet. There's no reason to again conjecture something which has no basis in reality. But beyond that, again, as I say, there are other vehicles in which these issues are being addressed. My magazine is only one of them. We've got competition. Um, it's amazing how in this re numerically relatively small Orthodox community of let's say several hundred thousand people across the United States, how many different publications there are and rather high quality. I mean, we, we've got the only, uh, I mean, there, there's an, an Orthodox daily that comes out. Now, someone in the secular Jewish or secular world wouldn't even know that it exists, but there is such a Orthodox daily that, sure. that, that's, that's, that's published. There's another uh, uh, widely read uh, Orthodox uh, newspaper. And there's several, uh, you know, glossy uh, weekly magazines in addition to ours that come out. And they're all addressing these issues to one extent or another. Is it being addressed enough? I don't know. But that leads me to my third point, which is, what exactly are they accomplishing with this? In other words, we believe, again, we, we don't believe in, in, you've got an issue, okay, then that means that, I, that anyone is fair game. Any other individual is fair game. I don't have to prove allegations, and I don't have to be concerned about what it might do to people's reputations. Character assassination makes no difference. Unfortunately, that's what's going on with these websites, with this netherworld of blogs and of these sorts of websites, is, is that the truth is the first casualty. And so the bottom line is, is that if they're saying that this is some sort of some sort of um, alternative to, to, uh, you know, to, 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 to what the rabbis are trying to do. Now, I say that no, you want to, you, you want to uh, address issues, do it in a responsible manner that realizes that there are people, real human beings and lives at stake on both sides of this. But simply to, to, you know, to, to, to an anybody to set up their blog, I mean, it's anarchy. That's what, and that's really another thing that the internet has given rise to, which is, it's, it's a system of Anaku where anybody with access to a computer can go there and can and has, has happened, can simply, with impunity, destroy other people. Um, and we don't believe that's a responsible way of going about an issue, no matter how grave the issue is. Uh, which, which, by the way, also ties into the whole question of reporting, of, of abuse, well, and I mean, so on and so forth. Right. We, 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 we're taking a responsible, sober, mature approach to that, to that whole issue, which recognizes that, hey, yeah, absolutely, there are issues that got to be dealt with. 
But remember, there, there are real human beings and families and reputations and careers and so on on both sides of the issue. Let's be responsible people about it. Let's not, let's not engage in this kind of Wild West uh, approach. It, but, that your, but your criticisms and your you know, bans, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. also open you up to criticism that you're just looking to silence legitimate criticism. Again. Uh, number one, there are no bans. So again, it's, this is not about well, bans. there was a ban at one time. I, 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 I don't know who issued it. It wasn't community-wide. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't it, issued by the greatest, by, it, by, by it, the it, leading it rabbis. It emanated from Lakewood. There's a, it emanated from, from Mount Shah Hussam. Again, again, when we say a ban, a ban means, uh, there's no, there is no blanket ban now either. No, there's, there's, there's no, there's there was, but I mean, I can't, you no, know. I, I don't think Mount Shah Hussam. This means, Hamora means a, a, severe, a severe warning. Severe warning, right, correct. And okay. it, it, this basically says a website this, is the work of the right. this website is the work fine, of the devil. Fine, and that may very well be, may be true. If you visit the website, you may find that if you believe that the devil believes in dragging good people through the mud based on zero evidence, then it is the work of the devil. It's, uh, I no, mean, have no, you looked no, at this website? This website is just. He's like a news aggregator. I don't know. It's the comments. I, the comments. The comments. Again, are, I have are, to read the Hebrew text. I can't comment on something I haven't read. Do you want to read but, it? But again, I'd be happy to do so. Is what it's saying is is that. It, it addresses that very point. It says that it, ostensibly this is simply a news site where it's you know bringing you know various news items and so on from the from the wider Jewish world. So, but but what what actually uh, much of the content is is uh, is uh, you know uh, is uh, fabricated stories, uh, stories that of 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 more uh, that are morally degraded, um, uh, of that, that contain profanity, that contain slander. Uh, that contain that contain um, humiliation, public humiliation of of good individuals, and so on and so forth. You have to understand, Josh. This, and again, it, it's you know for for someone coming from without from outside our community, it, it, this may seem more trivial. We we were different in that way. We, uh, uh, you know, ethics. Uh, th that's not to say that we're a community of. Of, of uh, ethical giants. No, we're actually a community of very flawed, very fallible human beings. You know, the, there's a saying in the Talmud that says the Torah wasn't given to the angels. Angels don't need the Torah. You know, the, when, when the Torah was first given, there was a, there was a, a tug of war between the angels and, and Moses to whom God was giving the Torah. And the angels said, we want it, and Moses won out. And God said, Basically, you, you folks don't need that. You don't have, you don't have families where, where you, you so you need a Torah to be able to, to, to show you how to bring kids up, and you don't have, you don't eat, so you don't, you don't need to know how to eat like a human being rather than like, a, like, like an animal, and so on and so forth. So the point is, we're very, very flawed. But we do believe that we've got the instruction manual, we've got the system, if we so choose to use it, and to the extent we choose to use it. The point is, next week, right before the, uh, on Sunday, right, a couple of days before the, the CMS Shas gathering, is going to be Tisha B'Av, the single saddest day, day full of mourning on the Jewish calendar. And every year, there's a, another, a new video which is, which is produced, which features some you know, leading speakers, entertaining speakers, and more serious scholarly speakers, and so on. It's run by something called the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation, which is an outfit out of upstate New York, Muncie. And this is viewed by, I'd say, probably 40 to 50,000 people you know, around the world in various Orthodox communities throughout this country and, and, and elsewhere. And the focus of this video and of the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation as a whole is what? Lashon Hara. That prohibition of the Torah, which is called against slander and gossip and hurtful words and humiliation. It's all about interpersonal ethics and what we do to other people. It's, this is not an afterthought. This, this, this lies at the very essence of Judaism. And we consider it even more important, if one can say that, than even our obligations towards God. Our obligations towards fellow man are considered even more important. Now, human psychology being what it is, it's much easier to be good with God than be good with fellow man because you don't have that whole push and pull. You know, God doesn't push your buttons the way your wife pushes your buttons or your kids or your coworker or your boss, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, a, it's very easy to shuckle and pray, you know, with great concentration, come off like a big tzaddik, like a big righteous man, and yet to, you know, to be speaking lots of lush and horror throughout the course of the day or to have said something to somebody else in front of a bunch of people where he turned red or to be cheating on your taxes, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these are all, you know, monetary also goes into, obviously, into, you know, making sure that our money is clean and that it's, you know, uh, well, you know, that's well earned and so on and so forth. That all goes with, into the rubric of interpersonal relations. You know, and there's a reason why on the Ten Commandments, which came down from, 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 from on high and with two tablets, 
So one tablet is devoted to things like belief in God and keeping the Shabbat, uh, you know, and not taking uh, God's name in vain. That those are all about our obligations towards God. And the whole the, uh, uh, second tablet, all five on the second tablet of the Ten Commandments are all devoted to interpersonal relations. Do not covet what your, what your fellow has. Do not, you know, commit adultery, which we consider to be an interpersonal issue, murder, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because they're, they're, they're equal. Two tablets, no, no one is greater than the other. For us to have, and again, I, I can't vouch for the okay. facts of what they're saying, but what they're saying here is, they're saying, no, you're right, this, is not, this, this website is not advocating apostasy, it's not advocating conversion en masse to, uh, to Christianity or whatever it is, it's doing something far worse. It's, it's purveying, it's peddling Lashon Hara on a regular basis. Now, whether that's true or not, you'd have to look at the, at the website, you'd have to do a, a study for a month and see how much character assassination, either in the body of the, of the, of the, of the, of the news items or, or in the comments that follow, and I can tell you the comments are full of this stuff, yeah. again, on the part of all these courageous individuals who are using their acronyms and just shooting baseless it's accusations an, an and, and just broad-braced slander of people and institutions and so on. It's just not a way to run a serious, striving spiritual community. And that's what they're saying. I'm interpreting this into, into, uh, into a, a contemporary idiom, but that's what they're saying. Okay, and for just, us, that's an extremely important issue. Let me just ask you this finally. Sure. Is, the, is the genie already out of the bottle on this? I mean, the Asifa was streamed on the web. People and that's, are, that's fine. You know, that, people are texting in the audience. You know something? It's interesting. I'm happy you gave me the opportunity to address that point, because uh, th that point was made in a lot of commentary. And, and, I, I, and I read that stuff, and I said, my gosh. If people weren't, weren't in, in the, throughout the stands texting, that, that would mean that everything's fine. We got our act together. We, don't, we wouldn't need the Asif. In other words, again, it's, it's like what I said before about why we need the Torah. The angels don't need it. Human beings need it. Well, the reason we need the Asif is because, for crying out loud, even at the very Asif itself, there were people that were busy. You know, although I did notice that one very tech-savvy fellow said he didn't see any smartphones. He, saw, he's, he, was, he was basically kind of categorizing, delineating all the various technology that he saw being used in the stands. Uh, but he didn't see, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, smart, you know, iPads or you know, uh, iPhones, uh, from what I recall. But again, it's the genie is not out of the bottle. And the fact is that we haven't had time for it today. But the truth is, there's been a tremendous amount of activity on the part of both individuals and businesses and large businesses to take concrete steps, specifically in response to the Asifa and and playing off the inspiration of the Asifa. Entire businesses, people, multi-million dollar businesses, you know, who, who, who certainly, for them, it's not the most convenient thing to, to install, you know, very, very intensive filters, uh, you know, and, and uh, which means, you know, that there are going to be sites where it's going to be a, a pain in the neck to get to that site, which I may need for my business and so on. Uh, but they've done this. They've taken these steps, and I can give you the documentation on that, which, which has been in, in the Orthodox newspapers and so on. I mean, I'll just give you one small anecdote that I had personal involvement with, which was in the week after the Asifa, a, a business here in Borough Park on, on, the, on the big strip on 13th Avenue, uh, which is a, it's an entertainment business, it's a, it's a music business, and they've got a Facebook page, and they have many thousands of followers on the Facebook page. And there's no question about it, they can monetize that, and there's, that brings business to them, the fact that they have a, an active uh, you know, Facebook page. And I got a call from them saying, you know, we, we were really inspired by their CIFA. We're going to continue our website. We don't need a Facebook page. We, you know, there's some things we don't need. In other words, and that's a lot of what this is all about, this cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. A website, yes, for business. But a Facebook page, no. Because Facebook page means that, mean, that, that, that because of us, someone might be going to Facebook. And from our site, they go to, uh, and, and, and again. So uh, they asked me to write a statement for them, in which they said basically goodbye to their customers and said, you know, we'd love to have you visit our website, but we're shutting down our Facebook page. Because we're a Jewish business, serving Jewish customers, and we have a conscience. We have a Jewish conscience, we have a, and we have our spiritual obligations. And there are things that are more important than money to us. Eitan, what would you say, sure. and this is my final question, what would you sure. say um, to those people who have been sexually abused who are looking for a website to find other people who have been similarly abused? I mean, if there are internet blockers, it's quite possible that they wouldn't be able to get on that website. Okay. Um, and secondly, if, you know, if there's a tracking system, a, a, a young girl is raped by her father, uh, uh, you know, okay. by her rabbi, and so forth. Right. There's a website 
uh, I interviewed the um, the woman who runs it, mm -hmm. who you know is is basically saying that 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 this ASIFA and this blocking is a waste of time. I mean, there's so many more important issues out there, and also her website, which is you know has no ads, right. it's completely sincere, right. um, would be uh, you know would be punished, would be shut off. So again, to to the point of that, there are so many more important issues, which again was on the sign that was held up by the by the uh, several dozen or several score of folks, uh, you know, across the street. The, the internet is not the problem. As I told, uh, you know, media outlets back uh, during the SCF, I said, that's what's beautiful about America. You can say that the internet is not the problem, just you can say global warming is not the problem, or smoking is not a problem. Uh, but, but the AMA Journal is full of uh, evidence that it is a problem. Uh, and, you know, the scientific consensus, so to speak, is that global warming is a real problem. Um, but, hey, you can ignore that, no problem. Well, the point is, is that in, in scientific terms and in social terms, in, in, in terms of reality, the notion of saying that the internet is not a problem and that there are so, much, so many more pressing issues for the Jewish community or for the world community for that matter is simply an, a, is, is, is simply an, a, an analog to global warming. It's, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the highest uh, form of, 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 of sticking one's head in the sand and of, you know, so, and, and I think it does a disservice to the whole abuse issue, which is a real issue. But the idea that, 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 that they, they can only get traction or only bring attention to the abuse issue, which has received so much attention, and not just through the internet, again, through the pages of periodicals, of newspapers and magazines, and through, and through conferences, either conferences on the part of the Orthodox mental health community, which there is a large... Uh, I mean, obviously you're not community. doing enough about it because, this, because people are still coming to the site and it's sincere, and they're Josh, saying, Josh, and it's trying to find a community. Why should that be shut down? Josh, when, when, it's, it's, a, it's a major societal issue, just like it is in the outside world, is abuse. Just like so many things, just like addictions are, just like alcoholism well, is. They're all, they're, these issues are never going to go, I mean, the, the notion that, hey, there's still abuse going on means uh, that, that it's because, we, it's because we're banning sites. I mean, that, 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 that's a disconnect from reality. It's, a, it's, it's still here because it's an ongoing human issue which is not going to go away anytime soon. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an integral issue within our communities, just like it is again in the outside world, just like so many psychological dysfunctions are. My point is to say that I don't understand why people need to say that this is the number one issue and all those issues that you're trying to address the SC Why, should, why shouldn't yeah. someone be able to go onto that website? And they will be able to. If they really need to, they will be able to. Yeah, but they have to get a are, filter. Are we, are we sending jackbooted police into Orthodox homes? Well, what are we doing here? You're having, we're trying you're having to, incredibly we're, influential rabbis right, tell that's people right, that's right. that there is no and excuse someone for is, using the internet when it's not absolutely necessary. Correct. Right. And, and the, some, the head of the household right. is going to say, sorry, no smartphone for you. Right. Forget about the fact that these right. girls or these boys are right. not interested in seeing porn. Right. are not interested in, in getting weapons or anything like that. They're interested in meeting another person who has gone through a similarly horrible Correct. experience. Correct. So I'll tell you that there are any number of ways, and I can list them for you right now, about how an abuse victim can, uh, can, can get help for their plight. Number one is they can go onto a website. Again, th there's no... What, what, Where are they supposed to go onto a website if there's uh, no internet? Uh, again, you mean, you mean a child in a home, something like that? Yeah, or a teenager Fine. or, or no a No problem. 718 help now. Okay, it's, I, I, I know it very well because my mother-in-law was one of the founders of the site. It's a psychological helpline which is staffed on a purely volunteer basis by dozens, probably scores, of orthodox psychologists, psychiatrists, and, um, and uh, social workers. It's not the only one uh, of, 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 su of such type mm -hmm. um, where you can call someone up and on a purely anonymous basis you can discuss any sort of psychological problem and certainly abuse and I have no doubt that they have fielded many calls about abuse. And what about people getting together and having uh, Fine. a so, so again, and they have the resources and they will connect such a person with, 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 with the help they need. And again, like I say, there are, there are numerous mental health resources within the Orthodox community. I'm just talking about one which literally is at the press of a button where you pick up a phone and you talk to someone. Um, and again, there are, you know, a person can walk into, OHEL uh, is, is a major mental health agency here in Borough Park, run under Orthodox auspices. A person can walk into their offices and can discuss their plight. And believe me, that's a far more responsible, not just res not really responsible, but it's, it's something that will be far more productive for that unfortunate young victim than getting in touch with 
somebody on a website whose vera who, for, for whose veracity I cannot vouch and who is agenda driven and who is looking to 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 add another number to what they claim to be the burgeoning numbers of abuse victims in the Orthodox community. You tell me, I mean, as a parent, what would you say? Uh, and as a fair-minded individual, what would you say is a more responsible way of such a victim reaching out for help? To call a helpline which is staffed by real professionals, compassionate people, or they're on a volunteer basis to help exactly a girl of that sort? Or to, or to, or to log on to this site where what they're really about is, ah, I got another notch in my bed. Here's another one. I get them in. True, not true. Uh, yeah, of course you abuse and so on and so forth. I, I, and just when you just talk but about in terms of options, why shouldn't someone have the option? But Josh, what I'm saying is you, they do have options and options that I, that personally I think that on a professional basis, a psychologist would tell you that's an option that's far more going to be far more productive and far more worthwhile than the other option. Okay, just so I know sure. your opinion. Um, the in uh, sorry to like make you do, do this into a sound, but I want to make sure that I'm completely right here. <laughs> sure. You believe that the internet is the greatest challenge in the history of mankind? To mankind? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. I, I, on, on a on a on, on a on a spiritual slash moral basis. Greatest level. spiritual. On, on a spiritual slash moral level. I believe that it, it is the greatest challenge that, that mankind has ever so faced. The greatest spiritual and moral challenge to mankind. Okay. Yeah, that that that, that we have had in history. Okay. Um, yeah. And second is. Um, and let me just if, if I could just the second part of that sentence is because of the way that it that, that it dehumanizes us and that it and that it um, it, it it attacks so many of the most important aspects of our humanity. Okay. That's why it is that kind of challenge. And secondly, getting back to the cost-benefit analysis. Sure. I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pin you down here. Is there no excuse <laughs> for, for using the internet when it is not absolutely necessary? I'm not going to say that, no. I'm certainly not. This but is in the book, in the book that you guys put out. It's the first thing that's in bold letters. Again, fine. So, uh, like I, I say, I mean, you're shifting the goalposts here. I'm not because I, I already acknowledged that the Asifa, which uh, which this was supposed to have been dis distributed, did not did not have a univocal message. Okay. And and that, as I mentioned, the very next morning there was there was a meeting of of, of hundreds of you know, communal leaders, and there have been, by the way, neighborhood local mini Asifas in Flatbush. And in um, and in and in far, five towns far Rockaway out near where I live and so on in the months in you know just in June so, for so example so at which at which a, a very different message has a somewhat different message has been put forth which is that it is a community a community you know decision or or even a family by family decision so again what absolutely necessary means is something is something where there is some elasticity. Uh, there's, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, that may be the message that's been, been put forth here. That's well, fine. who wrote this? This was put out by the sponsor of the Asifa. For which you're the spokesman. That's correct. But now you're asking me what has been happening on the ground well, I, look, since I, then. I, I don't mean, look, I don't mean to be a jerk about it. I mean, yeah. the fact is, is that it's fair to say that it yeah. is raising these kinds of issues yeah. and that the community, as communities, you know, Jewish and non-Jewish, are struggling with how to actually do it. Yeah, the point here is, you know, and I think it just makes sense in a, in a public relations sense. When you want to bring a, 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 an issue to, the, to public attention, you want to put it on the front burner, which, by the way, the Asifa did that in a way that could never have been accomplished any yeah, other way. It, it's got even the opponents and it's got people across the Orthodox spectrum, even modern Orthodox folks who were dumping on the Asifa before and saying, what do we need this for, and so on and so forth. And, now they're putting out their own guides to internet usage and safe usage and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah, you like me doing five-part series on it. Okay, there you go. And it's all because of one man with a white beard and sitting in Lakewood, New Jersey, who's, by the way, very, very ill and who has schlepped himself physically to all of these planning meetings and all of the, 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 the follow-up meetings after the SEF and so on. A man in his 80s who's not well. It's, a, it's an astonishing example, by the way, of, of personal sacrifice, of which he gains absolutely nothing and, and only stands to lose a great deal in terms of health and in terms of you know, a, a critique and, and so on. But my point is, for, I think from a PR perspective, when you really want to get the community's attention, you set the, the, the bar as high, as high as you possibly can. You don't say, well, you know what, yeah, it really depends. No, you say, only when absolutely necessary. And then the rubber hits the road, and you come to the reality, community by community, of what different communities are, are ready to do. Yeah, right, it's big it's, it's it's, enough to say what is absolutely necessary. There you go. Okay. Thanks a million. Pleasure. Yeah.